Hello everyone and welcome to another Nuclear Craft update video. It's been a long time since I made one of these. I think it might even be more than six months. Um, I've done a couple of spotlights and a couple of tutorials and stuff like that, but I haven't done an update video. Um, I'm going to go through the versions from 2.10i to 2.11g, uh, and then we'll do another one on the 2.12 updates. Um, there's a couple of things here. I, the, the change logs were really, really long. There's loads of bug fixes and all sorts of minor stuff. So I've sort of listed out all the important things that changed uh, in case you didn't know about them. The first thing to, to note, if you um, haven't been playing with later versions of NuclearCraft, so a lot of the textures changed. There's been a lot of textures that were changed, I think, version 2.10K, I think. So all the machines look different. Um, a lot of the items, if we type in NuclearCraft here, um, you'll see a lot of the items are still the same. Like a lot of them are still 32 times. But these are the ones that I didn't really think were much of a problem. It was mainly the uh, block textures that I wanted to get back to 16 by 16. And I think they're better than the old ones. Um, so pretty much all of them have changed. And yeah, hopefully they're, they're better. Uh, because a lot of people didn't like the old textures. They weren't great. Um, hopefully the new ones are a little bit better. Um, so on to actual features now, other than uh, just uh, the way it looks. Um, I added this rock crusher. So the rock crusher was added as sort of a replacement for the extra drops from ores. Um, so there's only really three recipes by default. Um, you've got granite, diorite, and andesite, which are those sort of like uncommon Minecraft rocks that didn't really have much of a sort of mechanical use in processes and stuff. Um, so I thought I'd give them one in this rock crusher. And you can see you get all these different uh, gem types that you used to get from ore drops, which was quite annoying when you were mining. So uh, this is sort of packaging up all of these little gems and things into these three rocks. So. Uh, yeah, basically all of these have a chance output. I can't remember what exactly when chance outputs were added. I think it might be like 2.11 or something. So you can see here when you hover over these different outputs, um, you, it tells you what the minimum and ma maximum are for the output. So here you've got 0 to 1. I think that's probably 0 to 2 here. And it tells you the average amount you expect per process. So here it's 0 0.74, 0 0.64, etc. So it tells you sort of the information for chance outputs. And of course, through Craft Tweaker, I think I did a Craft Tweaker tutorial on this, you can actually add your own craft, um, you can add your own chance outputs to any one of these um, recipes. So um, that's what you're going to see if you do something like that. So here, what I've got is a setup that is using the Rock Crusher in a massive system to make the eutectic knack alloy, which you need for the molten salt reactors over there, which we showed in that spotlight. So over at this stage, I think I added, no, fly salt mixture. I think I'm making the fuel over here, sorry. Um, for the coolers, the coolants, you need eutectic knack alloy. So see here, knack alloy. And you see here that we need uh, this stuff that's mixed in with all these different coolant types to actually make the coolant that can be used in the uh, salt coolers. So you can see here, we can just use straight eutectic knack, but you mix it in with redstone and quartz and all the different cooler types. Um, from the passive reactor to make your molten salt coolants. Uh, but the base is this uh, eutectic knack alloy. So here what I have is I have these rock crushers. This one is crushing up granite. And I'm using the granite to get this uh, villialmite. I don't actually know how to pronounce it. I think it's villialmite. And I am just, uh, just dumping all the rest of the stuff into that void pipe. And here I'm getting uh, carobiite, I guess. I don't actually know what they're called. I literally just scoured Google for any um, gems that would give me the right elements, basically. That's all I did. So I don't actually know how they're pronounced. Same with rhodochrosite, by the way. Um, so yeah, this is uh, getting up uh, diorite, crushing up diorite. It's dumping all the other stuff. And then I'm turning the Villiarmite into, I think it is, let's have a look. It's sodium fluoride. And this is going to make potassium fluoride in the, uh, the carobiite one. And then I'm turning it into a solution. And then reacting it with water. Uh, to get the hydroxide, so sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide, and then melting that down into molten potassium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide. And then I'm electrolyzing that, and electrolyzing this hydroxide will give me oxygen, uh, water, and the metal. So potassium in this case, sodium in this case, and then I mix the potassium and sodium together, and I get the NAC alloy. And there we are, that's the liquid. So it's quite a long process, but should be quite a fun one. Um, there's lots of little sort of sequences of processes you need to make for various things in nuclear craft and here's another one it's a bit of a longer one to be honest but there we go that's how it works sometimes so yeah that's how you uh, make your eutectic neck and so that was basically showing off what the rock crush is now used for um, there's also arsenic as well so if we look up here arsenic you can see this is a new material um, so arsenic is used to make these elite solar panels we'll get to that in a second but it's also used to make thermoconducting alloy which is used to make the coolant heaters and it's also used to make some of the heat exchange stuff, in particular the elite uh, tubes, which are the 
best um, heat exchanger tubes to use, um, but they're also the most expensive. So yes, there's also arsenic that you can get from crushing up, I believe it's andesite. Yeah, down here, arsenic. So there we are. So a lot of that stuff comes from the rock crusher. Uh, moving on past this uh, big processing, um, I have here an alloy furnace. I want to show off uh, something that was a problem a while back, but it's been fixed. So if I just get some iron ingots here, um, it used to be that if you typed in too many um, of a t certain type of ingot, so let's get um, two stacks of it here. Um, so there's two stacks of iron. Imagine if I tried to um, pump in two stacks of iron. What well, it used to be that um, after this first stack of iron went in, the second stack would then like clog up the second slot. As you can see now, it doesn't do that. So um, if you're making steel or something and you want to make sure that there's some space for graphite, then that now happens. So you won't get clogged up, um, which is obviously quite nice. I know a lot of other machines like the Enderio alloy smelter does this as well. So um, uh, sort of more in line with that. So hopefully this is not so useless as it used to be. And of course, um, you can output from all sides and input from all sides. I think that was a change during one of the 2.10 ver versions. I can't really remember. Um, so there we go. That's some um, smart item ins insertion. Um, what you can also do now is you can actually um, right click upgrades in. So if you just right click without shifting, you'll just put one in. And if you sneak and then put them all in, uh, there we are. So you can put them all in with a sneak shift, a sneak uh, right click. Uh, moving on to the fission reactors, uh, there's been a change to diamond coolers because they were a bit too hard to use before in the past, I thought. So now instead of having to be next to two water coolers, you just need one. So the new rule for diamond coolers is that they need to be at, uh, next to at least one active water cooler and one quartz cooler. And so here, that's sort of an example of the sort of thing you'd have in your reactor. So that will make diamond coolers a little less useless, which is nice. Uh, and moving on, we have open computer support for uh, fission reactors and fusion reactors. I think I showed off the fusion reactor open computer, support, open computer support in a little bit. It's quite simple because I don't really know how open computers works. Um, but basically there's a load of um, programs that you can use um, to, first of all, as you see here, I'm activating and deactivating the reactor, turn it on and off. So I can activate it here. So it's turned on and I can deactivate it. So that's one of the simpler programs. Um, but there's loads of other ones to get the efficiency and stuff. So I think we can probably do r.get efficiency get fission fuel heat get length uh, there's lots of them uh, get problem that's if it's not working uh, cooling rate let's get the cooling rate so minus 18,320 as you can see here in the GUI that's what it is the cooling rate is that um, so yeah there's all these different programs that you can use to set up some sort of complicated open computers thing it's way beyond me open computers I don't really know how it works but I'm sure people can do cool stuff with that moving on uh, battery blocks now output a comparator signal proportional to their stored charge so you can see here that uh, this signal is zero because it's empty. This is about half because uh, this is about half full. And here it's outputting a full redstone signal because it's totally full. So I think someone suggested that I add that. So there it is. Um, whether it's useful or not, I don't know. Okay, uh, well, I guess you could do something like turning off a reactor if the buffer is full or something. I don't know, something like that. Um, next, we've got some advanced DU and elite solar panels. So the way this works is that they're basically just uh, like any other upgradable solar panel mod. Uh, you make it from the last uh, uh, tier of solar panels. So these ones produce five, you can upgrade it to a 20, and then you can use this one to upgrade to the DU, which is 80, and then use this to update, uh, upgrade to the Elite, which is 320. Um, so that's pretty simple, but uh, it now explains why it was originally called a basic solar panels because there were more to come. Um, next, uh, if you have GregTech Community Edition installed, uh, there is now support for their energy system, their EU system. Um, so if you hook up a fission reactor, it can produce, if you hook up, up to a Greg Tech cable, it will produce the Greg Tech energy. It, uh, the machines will also accept Greg Tech energy. So um, if you're using that mod, then there is support for that. Um, Tinker's Construct, uh, there is now support for all of the uh, tool materials. So if we go to tools, oh no, if we go to, hang on, what am I doing here? I need to go to tool materials. You can see here, we've got all of the um, nuclear craft ones. We've got boron, tough alloy, hard carbon and boron nitride. So we've got boron, which is sort of a bit, I think it's a bit better than iron, but it's worse than steel. Tough alloys are uh, similar to steel. I think it might be a little bit better than steel in some areas. Um, hard carbon, a bit better still, and then boron nitride is the best. Um, so there we go. That's if you like Tinker's Construct, which pretty much everyone does. You can use the nuclear craft materials if you want to. Uh, and there's also smell through support for all the different alloys. So for example, here I've got this uh, thing of steel here. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some boron in here and this will melt up slowly but surely. 
Boron does take a little while to melt down. It takes a lot longer than steel does. Here we are. There we go. There's boron. You can see here that it's already starting to alloy with the steel. And uh, we've got some molten ferroboron. And then we can actually put our lithium in here. And then the lithium will uh, alloy with the ferroboron. And hopefully we'll see here that we get some tough alloy, as you expect from the alloy furnace recipe. So then you can use your tough alloy to make yourself a lovely pickaxe head or something like that. So if you want to use the smeltery to make the nuclear craft alloys, you can do. This will take a little time to cool, but eventually we can take up our tough alloy pickaxe head and use that for some really awesome tool. Okay, next, radiation. Oh, there's not much to go here. Radiation, um, you remember, I think I've already done, well, I have definitely done already a uh, spotlight on radiation. Here, not very radioactive around here, femtorads per tick, so very low amount of radiation. Um, if you want to learn more about radiation, it's sort of a new system. It's disabled by default, but um, it's pretty cool. It makes things a little bit more dangerous. Maybe think a little bit more about how you're setting up your fission reactors and your machines and stuff. Um, but basically, yeah, uh, Geiger counters are the thing that tell you how uh, much radiation there is and all the rest of the information you can find in the, uh, the radiation spotlight, which I did, I think, maybe a couple months ago or so. Um, so yes, go and check that out if you want to know more about that. And then finally, I added some seriously, it says here in the, in the change log, I added some seriously serious stuff, such as schmores. So here's a schmore. Um, there's quite a long sort of process chain for making schmore. So you need marshmallows, uh, milk chocolate, and graham cracker, graham cracker, sorry, I, I believe it's pronounced. Uh, so graham cracker comes from flour in a pressurizer. Uh, marshmallows uh, come from liquid marshmallow, which comes from melting, uh, sorry, it comes from mixing together molten sugar and gelatin. Uh, gelatin comes from um, uh, crushing up uh, like pork or fish, and sugar comes from just, well, melting sugar. And then finally the chocolate, uh, you get the milk chocolate from mixing uh, milk in with, I don't know why that text is broken, uh, milk in with um, dark chocolate. Dark chocolate comes from mixing sugar in with unsweetened chocolate. Unsweetened chocolate comes from mixing cocoa butter and chocolate liqueur together, liquor together, which comes from uh, cocoa beans and sort of crunching up cocoa beans and sort of processing them. So that's how you make a schmore. And I've also got a new music disc. Um, if you've, oh no, I typed the wrong thing here. Uh, if you like uh, Star Control, then here's a music disc for you. Uh, and I think that's pretty much everything from 2.10i to 2.11g. Um, next, I will do the 2.12 update video. Uh, hopefully you learned something. If you have any questions, be sure to uh, put them down in the comments. Um, if you would like to join the Discord server, please feel free to. The Discord server is awesome. There's loads of awesome people in there talking about reactor designs and uh, new stuff for the mod. Um, so it's, it's really cool. Um, so thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you in the next update video.